Welcome back to Project Manuals. If you're new in these parts, my name is Brandy. Nice to meet you. About once a month, I like to throw a couple quarts of soup in the freezer just to have them around. Quick meal, short on time, these kinds of things. Or if you just don't know what you want one night. Um, this month, Mike went to the doctor. And for those of you who've been around with the channel for a little while, you know he's been doing keto for a couple years. His triglycerides are super high right now. So keto is out, but low carb is still in. Um, we are incorporating some beans and other sort of natural carbohydrates with higher fiber content just to work on getting those numbers down. We are suckers for white chicken chili. And this soup has got comfort that you would find in a white chicken chili without all of the extra fat. If it is something that you still need, just go ahead and add a little heavy whip at the end of that recipe after you've finished either in the crock pot or in the instant pot or even on the stove top. This soup can also be thrown in the crock pot or the instant pot, or you can just batch prep it and throw it in the freezer for later. I'm gonna show you how to do both of those things today so you can sort of play with it and see what works for you. Today, I'm using my handy dandy vacuum sealer. You can use what you usually use. Um, if you'd like a tutorial or a little refill, fresh, go ahead and follow along on the vacuum sealer portion. Otherwise, throw them in a Ziploc or any other container that you typically use to put um, soups in the freezer. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, so one of the first things we need to do is go ahead and prep our veggies. Like I said, I've got seasonings ready to go. Um, in the recipe, we've got a half a can of corn in each one of those just to give you a little bit of texture and just kind of keep it lively. We're gonna do one onion for each bag, so we will chop those up, and I've got one zucchini for each bag as well. And you know what I have told you before, batch everything. We're gonna cut all the zucchinis, get the heads and the tails off, then break them down, throw them in the bowl. We're gonna start on onions after that. All right, for this, we're just gonna cut these down. They don't need to be diced, just kind of chopped small-ish. Kind of do it to your liking, right? And if you're new to cutting, see how this has got kind of, in a hair, we call it like two calyx, right? Or two spirals. You've got two parts. Try to keep it that way if you can help it. It'll just keep your onion parts together as you go to break them down. Okay, and so you see that one's got one too, double whirl. Just cut down in the middle of it. All right, everything's ready to go. And I wanted to just walk you through the food saver if that's something you've got and maybe you don't get the value out of it that you, you could be. So basically you just open it up like this. I don't have it turned on yet. And this is the reason why. We've gotta go ahead and get these bags ready to take everything. So look at what you've got here and what you're gonna need to be fitting into a bag because you actually cut these two size. We're gonna be using a cup and I believe three quarters uh, beans, dry beans, a zucchini, an onion, a pound of chicken, a half a cup of corn, and your seasonings, as well as garlic. So you'll want it a little bit sizable because you do not wanna seal this up where it's just full to the brim. All right, so I would say probably here is a good spot to leave that. And all you're gonna do, this is just a little cutting knife. You're just gonna slide it across and we've got it released. And then typically what I do is just measure them out. So I've got the second one. And I'm just gonna do three because that fourth one, remember, is gonna go straight into the Instant Pot. So from here, we don't need this portion anymore. This is the portion that we're gonna use and we actually don't even need to open it. So the only reason you would open it is to clean it out from juices that may have fallen there before. We're gonna put these guys upside down and then we're not suctioning anything yet. We are creating a bag. So these go straight through right now. We need to seal the bottom so that we can then put our food in and seal the top. So for that, you put it in upside down, but first you're gonna hit this seal button so that it knows it's not vacuuming, it is just sealing. 
You'll be able to do a few of them before the machine says, no, 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 tap out, I'm out of here, I need a minute to cool off, okay? So it's not something you can push through that heat. Once it says it's done, it's done for just a minute. You see, it just told me, no, 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 I'm not doing that. All right, so we've got three bags. We're gonna layer our vegetables and then our seasonings into our bags before we do the chicken and then lastly beans. I've got just a little cup gonna help us out to just kind of get those layered. And then I've got seasonings right here for you. There's gonna be salt, pepper, cumin, oregano, and chili powder. And those are gonna just go right down on top. Seasonings and veggies are in. Next stop is going to be our corn, our green chilies, and our garlic. So I'm gonna do the garlic first. It's three cloves of garlic or one tablespoon of minced garlic. Just go ahead and put those in. Half a can of corn for each. Then we'll do two tablespoons of diced green chili for each. And there's not much left. It is probably pretty close to two tablespoons. I'm just gonna dump it in here. That doesn't make sense to save, you know, just a little bit. Okay, our next move is to layer our chicken in. Okay, our chicken is in our bags and that is just gonna go just the solid chicken breast. You don't need to break it down. There's no chunking, there's no chopping. Don't do any of that. When it's finished cooking, it will actually just shred apart for you, which is exactly what we're looking for in an easy meal. Last stop before we seal up and or cook. We've got a cup and three quarter great northern beans going into each bag or bowl or crock pot. You get the idea. All right, so that is what we've got. We've got a bag ready to go, and it looks like I could have made those a little bit smaller. So ideally you want a couple inches of headspace, but it probably could have been finished here, right where my fingers are. It's not gonna hurt it to be a little longer. The only thing that that's going to do is just use up your plastic a little bit faster. So I was thinking I would seal these wet, but to be honest, there's not very much wetness in here. Everything that you're going to be adding that's gonna be liquid is going to be to the Instant Pot, so you're not taking up space in your freezer. So for this, we're on still, it is set to dry. Let's see how dry does. So since we're, we are sealing, but we're actually vacuuming, we don't push anything this time. We're just gonna go ahead and press it in there, and it's gonna do the rest of the work. All right, check it out. From here, you do wanna take a Sharpie and write what this is on the bag because you know how it is. You toss it in the freezer and once it's frozen, everything looks the same. So you're gonna put white chicken chili with the date. Ideally, this should last six to nine months in the, re in the refrigerator, in the freezer. Um, so that way you know what date you're playing with that start date, okay? We're gonna go ahead and get the rest of them bumped out. We will have to wait just a moment because it will want to think. Now see, this one did get a little bit wet. So like where it suctioned in, you can see where it sealed after that. This may not be a great seal. So this one has the potential to kind of leak and potentially just open up and lessen that shelf life inside the freezer for you. So the next one we will do on the moist food setting just to ensure that nothing happens. This one, you can see nothing got through. But this one you can definitely see there's liquid on the other side of that seal. So, oh, that was my elbow. So what we're gonna do is we'll clean that up so you're not handling, you know, chicken juice and that kind of thing when you pick this up out of the freezer. But like I said, for the next one, we'll go ahead and set it on that moist setting. So now that we've got it set on that moist setting, the vacuum sealer knows not to be quite so aggressive pulling the juices and those kinds of things out. 
It hasn't let go just yet. There it goes. Now you see how much better that one looks than the last one? Just as a, just comparison. See, this one's got that liquid all on the other side of the seal. So I will likely just test that. But it does feel like it's actually pulled pretty tight. So what I'll do is just wipe that liquid out of there. All right, these guys are ready to go in the freezer now and they are good to pull when you've got a rainy day or you're tight on time or you forgot to prep or, 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 or. You're golden, you've set yourself up, you've got a cushion now, right? All right, our three bags are in the freezer. This is our last dinner. Now to do this from frozen, what you wanna do is pull one of your bags, let it thaw on the countertop or in a pan for about 10 minutes to go ahead and get a head start there. Then you're gonna cut it open beans first, right? So we put everything in, beans were on the top. We wanna cut it open with beans on the top. From there, we're gonna go ahead and dump it in beans first. And that is because water sinks to the bottom and we want our beans on the bottom so they can absorb all of our liquid. I've got four cups of chicken broth and I do use a reconstitute, I do use a reconstituted um, base, like a chicken base, uh, that just stays in the refrigerator, doesn't go bad, and then I don't have to worry about the cans or the cartons or anything else. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure I whisked it together, but just in case anything has settled. From there, all we're doing, putting the lid on, high pressure, 30 minutes, natural pressure release. You wanna make sure you're not on vent, but that you're on seal. That is going to allow your pressure cooker to come up to pressure and cook those beans and chicken in a half an hour instead of however long it would take in the crock pot. If you're gonna do this in the crock pot, I would suggest probably four or five hours on high or seven to eight hours on low. So we've got that here, we're gonna turn it around. If you didn't see my last video, this is a steam diverter. So I really hate it when the steam valve shoots straight up, especially if I've got it under the cabinets. So what this does is it allows the steam to go out on the sides instead of ruining potential woodwork. So it just slips over the top. I've got it set to seal. From there, we're gonna do high pressure, pressure cook, and we are going to give ourselves a couple options that we're set at 40 now. So we've got it set for 30 minutes. It will beep here in just a moment. Let us know it's ready to get started. From there, it'll go under pressure 30 minutes. We're gonna let it completely naturally release its pressure. You've heard it, so it's ready to go now. And I will come back to you when it is lunchtime. All right, our Instant Pot is finished. We have been gone for just a little while, so I'll go ahead and hit the cancel so it will not keep warm anymore. And like I told you before, we're gonna go ahead and shred this chicken. And you can see that the beans have all cooked down really well inside there. And this, like I told you, should just look at how easy that shreds, you guys. And if you wanted to top this soup with cilantro, you could, if you're a sadist. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, personally, it does taste like soap to me. I'm one of those ones. Uh, but if that's something you like, feel free to go ahead and dice it up, throw it on top. If you wanted to throw some fresh guac, um, guacamole, avocado slices in there too, you'd be welcome to. But this is just, like I said, a nice, easy, comforting dinner. And with everything cooked so perfectly, I'm so sorry, I'm making a mess. With everything cooked so perfectly and nice and soft, the corn is such a nice contrast to have a little bit of something that's gonna give a crunch there. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you like budget saving hacks, meal prep, and copycat recipes, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell so you know when our next video drops, and give this video a like so other people can stock their freezers as well. I will see you next time. All right, so one of the first things that we need to do is get our bowl that we didn't have.
is get our bowl that we didn't have. Okay, I'm gonna get scissors. 